We can use a few properties of the t-distribution to help us figure out which is which. First, the t-distribution has shorter peaks and also fatter tails. So we can see that the larger peak is going to be for the normal distribution, and that also corresponds to slimmer tails, and the shorter peak is going to be the t-distribution with degrees freedom 4, with uh, the fatter tails. For the next one, we're going to use the CDF functions. Um, note that normal CDF from negative 1 to 1 for 0, 1, so the standard normal distribution, returns approximately 0.68. If we press second vars and go to norm CDF, and we do a lower limit of negative 1 and an upper limit of 1 with 0 and 1, this will check how much of the area of the standard normal distribution is within one standard deviation. And sure enough, it's about 68%. So we need to do the same thing for a t-distribution with four degrees of freedom. So if we press second vars again, we see they have this function tcdf, and that's what we're going to use. So let's run tcdf for one standard deviation from the mean, two standard deviations from the mean, and three standard deviations from the mean, and see what we get. When using tcdf, you have to input your lower and upper bound, just like normal cdf, but you also have to tell it degrees freedom, and that returns 0.626. Now since the peak of the normal distribution is higher, we expect more area to be within the first standard deviation from the mean, so it's not surprising this value is less than the 0.68. Let's run it for the other values. So I guess our rule will be the 62.6, 88.4, 96 rule. Doesn't quite have the same ring, but that's what it is for four degrees freedom. One final note, when you're going from cutoffs, the critical values, and trying to calculate an area, we're gonna use norm CDF and T CDF. They're the cumulative density functions on the calculator. On part C, we're going to be doing the process backwards. This time we're going from area to the cutoffs. So we're going to use inverse norm and inverse t to figure out how many standard deviations from the mean we have to go to cut off the middle 80% of the distribution. Let's start with z. For the standard normal distribution, we can figure out what cuts off the middle 80%. To find this critical value, z star, we have to tell it all the area to the left of it. So that's not only this 80%, but this 10% in the tail down here. So we're going to use the calculator command inverse norm, and we're going to tell it 0.9, which again is all the area to the left of this cutoff value. To do this, press second vars, and go down to inverse norm. For area, put 0.9, and leave the mean and standard deviation as 0 and 1. So this tells us we have to go about 1.28 standard deviations from the center to cut off the middle 80% of the data. The inverse t function works the same way, except I don't have a stamp for it since every t distribution is a little bit different. So we'll just have to sketch it. So again, we're going to use inverse t and we have to use the number 0.9 because we're talking about the 90% to the left of this cutoff value, t star. We also have to tell it how many degrees freedom we're dealing with. Press second, vars, go down to inverse t and type 0.9. For degrees freedom, put 4. And we see for t, we have to go about 1.53 standard deviations out to capture the middle 80% of the distribution. For the normal distribution, we had to go 1.28 standard deviations in each direction. So let's draw those cutoffs. And we'll shade the normal distribution yellow. Now for the t distribution, we had to go 1.53 standard deviations from the mean in each direction. Let's shade the t distribution blue. And we'll shade the intersection between the two of them green. Now notice there's part of each distribution that doesn't overlap. If you were to add up the blue area, it would actually equal the yellow area. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. 
It's got a hundred problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.